What's up my chemistry people? We're going to connect the half-life of a reaction to the rate constant of a first order reaction. Ah, oh, kinetics, so much fun. You can have fun going fast, you can have fun going slow. First thing we're gonna do is define half-life and then numero dos. We're gonna calculate the half-life of a first order reaction. Okay, so first of all, what the heck is a half-life? For a reaction, it's simply defined as the length of time it takes for the concentration of a reactant to fall to half of its initial value. Pretty ingenious name, if I do say so myself. All right, now, the half-life of a reaction depends on the order of the reaction. But lucky for you, and lucky for me, we are only gonna focus on the half-life of first order reactions because the half-life of a first order reaction is constant. And you have a handy dandy formula that's on your screen, in your notes, and on your formula chart that tells you how to determine the half-life for a first order reaction. 0 0.693 over your rate constant. And although we have many first order reactions, it's also important to recognize that radioactive decay reactions reactions are very common examples of a first order process. Now there's a great image in your notes currently on your screen that I think does a great job of explaining half-life for a first order reaction. Notice that we have plotted concentration against time. For this reaction, the half-life is 100 seconds. So notice that if we start with a concentration of 1.00 molar, after that first half-life or 100 seconds have passed, we are now at half of the concentration, we're at 0.5 molar. After another 100 seconds has passed, or another half-life, we have once again halved the concentration. We're down to 0.25 molar, or half of what we were at. One more time, another 100 seconds, another half-life halves the concentration, down to 0.125 molar. Again, the calculations here for first order reactions are pretty straightforward and fairly easy. And it's important to remember that for this course and for the AP test, half-life calculations for zero and second order reactions aren't gonna be considered. Woo! All right, let's take a look at a couple of quick examples to solidify this idea of half-life. Molecular iodine dissociates at 625 Kelvin with a first order rate constant of 0.271 per second. What is the half-life of this reaction? Formula chart, half-life equation. Boom! We wanna know the half-life? We know the rate constant. Plug it in, jump to the calculator. 0.693. The half-life for this reaction is 2.56 seconds. Boom, easy. Example number two. A first order reaction has a half-life of 26.4 seconds. How long does it take for the concentration of the reactant in the reaction to fall to 1 8th of its initial value. All right, now there are a couple different ways you can do this. Here's the way that I find the easiest and one that I think you should consider, especially because you'll have to answer some of these questions without a calculator on the multiple choice section. Let's imagine that the initial concentration was one molar. After one half-life, our concentration is gonna be cut in half, or 0.5 molar. After two half-lives, our concentration is going to be one quarter of the original concentration, or half of the half. After three half-lives, our concentration is gonna fall to one-eighth of the original concentration, or half of the one quarter. Now, you could keep going. Imagine after four half-lives, we'd be at one sixteenth, five half-lives, one thirty-second, and the magical world of fractions just keeps going. But for this question, we've determined that it's gonna take three half-lives for the concentration of the reactant to fall to one eighth of its initial value. And if each half-life is 26.4 seconds, and it takes three half-lives to fall to one eighth of its initial value, 26.4 times three eighths, it's gonna take 79.2 seconds for that to happen. Boom, and we are done.